Okay, so let's see if I can do this in 10 minutes or 15 minutes without devolving into like angry ranting or whatever. Angry ranting or maniacal laughter. Okay, so uh, where were we? Yes, about over a week ago, right? I was having a bit of a rough patch trying to get the wins, trying to get the W with Vincent. So it got to a point where I was like, hey, uh, what the fuck am I doing? I'm probably a fraud or something. So if this carries on, I should probably call my version of Vincent Lucet because you don't get the wins with them. You just get the L's. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, being lame. So anyway, in a fit of rage, I just uh, basically deleted all of the decklists I had. It's like I tried just about everything. It's like the whole combo with the pumpkins, the moderate tights, and then the most I did is just like, embarrass myself on stream and then I like, say, hey, and people saying like, hey, remember that match of KO versus Vincent? That doesn't show like what you should do against Vincent. That's too much cheese. Today I say, okay, on the side note, right, today I say like that's total bullshit. Because Vincent follows Regardless of whatever cards Vincent plays, okay, like, aside from their off-meta, like, dimensional crossroad thing, but then again, I think even that also, like, follows some, like, rules or something. Regardless of whatever cards Vincent plays, Vincent follows certain, like, principles, certain rules. So in order to, in order to, like, find out, like, how to play against Vincent, you just need to like find out like what Vincent what Vincent does and then like try to stop her along the axis. So regardless of whether you play Envelop or Pumpkin, Moderate Type, Funeral Moon, whatever, Vincent has a certain rotation. Which and you need to find out how to deal with that rotation. It's not about the cards, it's about the rotation, damn it. Okay, so sorry. Uh within I say right. I said no maniacal laughter, I said no angry ranting. And here we are with already like one maniacal laughter and one angry ranting. Uh, let's move on, let's move on. So I deleted just about all the like decks. I tried some like interesting stuff like Vile Inquisition and Looming Doom. Didn't work out. I tried something the purple Discord they were like all on about uh what you call it? The uh, Sonata and Looming Doom. I tried that. Uh was decent, but it had it has so no sorry, not Sonata. Looming Doom, yes, Looming Doom has some problems. I will explain later lah, later in this video. So I downloaded a copy of Guelo's deck. Okay, so Guelo's deck is actually pretty good as of this recording, right? As of this recording, the latest version of this deck. It has about a 73% or even more, a 73% win rate on Talisha. So if you are looking for, if any of you listening to this, right, you're looking for a Vincent deck to play. And then you think that my deck is like too crazy or whatever, like too like slot machine too pachinko or whatever. Uh, you can go play this deck or something. The latest version is 73% win rate on Talisha. I should probably do a video next time like trying out like giving status version a spin or something. I should get good results out of it. So anyway, uh download a copy of his deck, play one or two matches with it, and then after that it's like, hey, what happens if I stick in pumpkins? Can I make his deck go faster? <laughs> uh yeah, it did it did go like slightly fast. It would go slightly faster, I think, but in truth, right, I don't know why. Because after this, right, I thought like hey based on whatever I've learned so far, why not just like rebuild Vincent from the ground up? So I did this, which turned into this. So this is like what we're working with now. Behold the Cloud Goblin 9000. Why do I call it the Cloud Goblin 9000? Who knows? Okay, anyway, uh, quick rundown of this deck. I still need this, I still need a deck intro to be less than 15 minutes, 15 minutes. I've done this already, like, this is like a second take or third take. I ran wrote down for too long. I should probably do a script or something next time, but I don't think I have the time for that right now. Maybe by next month, I'll try to do a script. I'll try to have my deck intros like scripted or something. 
So okay, uh, we will run through the deck actions. No, okay, summary of deck first. So this deck aims to put as many banished cards in the banished zone as possible, as many playable cards in the banished zone as possible. By turn three or turn four onwards, that's when your tuning resource is online, so you don't have to spend a card on the spell one creepers. So once you've got at least three rune gate cards in banished, two of which are deathly wills, and then you have a shadow down attack action, a go again enabler and a way to get your third rune chant in order to chain a deathly will into a deathly will you'll be able to do a triple gate from banished and if you get more cards than that to and you get more cards than that to work with you can potentially even do a quadruple gate or higher okay so now let's run through the cards deathly delight we're gonna stack we're gonna like stack a lot of cards in banished we're gonna take blood that damage opponent's gonna swing at us nowadays heavy hitters so the Hits are gonna come in heavy and then you are not going to like totally block everything even with the D-Rex. You're gonna lose life. So definitely delight helps to claw back the life. Definitely will for our combo, for our like combo setup, like our combo turns. You chain definitely will into definitely will into other stuff, then uh, you can do like interesting things. Funeral Moon. A way you get your third rune chan. The good thing about this is you stick in your banish zone, so you save space in your hand. Get it. So Jack will turn the second way. So the different matchups for this deck will give you like a, at least a two thirds chance of having your red pumpkin create a rune create a rune chant. So this is how you can get your third rune chant. But it's not a hundred percent way, and the probabilities are set to change as you draw, pitch, and play cards. So normally I use this as a way to get your cards into to get more cards into banish so you can combo off faster. The blue jack o' lantern does the same thing as well, but just it's just for like comboing. It's just for getting more cards for like future card advantage. Not future card advantage, current card advantage. I'll explain later what that means. So this is for like card advantage. La. There's only like 14 or 15 blues in this deck. Don't count on this making a rune chant. So Wait, no, I'm going. I'm supposed to go through the attack actions. Ah, never I'll just go through the cards one by one. La. So, Rift Skitter, uh, this was supposed to be Bounding Demigon because of Tear Through the Portal, but without the Tear Through the Portal, right, the Go Again will come in useful for this. The Go Again will come in like very useful for this. Uh, you'll see this happen later in the match with the Vire. Room Blood Incantation, and although I'm trying to have the deck used as little non attack actions, which cause more than zero resources as much as possible although i'm like trying to like maximize that room the incantation is too good because it lets you room gate to it lets you room gate to like every turn while this is on the board most of the time like. so being able to room gate to every turn that lets you like do covering fire while setting up your combo so shadow puppetry your it's a shadow not attack action and go again enabler like combined into one. So what's not that what's I mean you should play this lah. If you're playing Vincent, you should play this. Dare through the portal. Same thing as Shadow Puppetry. It works with uh the red attacks as well as Funeral Moon and Requiem. So you think that 18 cards to work with is a bit like little. It was 20 lah, until I removed the boundings and put in the risk hitters you think like 18 is a bit little but remember people like they are we're all trying to like make putrid stirrings work out with only 15 cards in or even 18 cards in 18 blues i mean so if putrid stirrings can work with less than 18 blues i think the dash through the portal can work with 18 reds that are playable from banished so this is this could be a modern this could be a modern skies, but it's not because why? Realistically, right? You all play modern skies, right? Touch your heart, lah. Touch your heart. How many people actually let your modern skies attack hit? They only let it hit when they're about to die. They both and cannot block already. That's what, that's when they are like in a very shitty situation when they're behind. Or they let a modern sky hit if they are like inexperienced, lah. So you try to get your modern skies to hit against some somebody like half decent you try to get it against Bandog not going to happen admittedly there is 
a case where Morian Skies is good, that's against Dromai because their dragons cannot block. Their dragons cannot defend themselves. So you hit the dragon, you get a rune chant, then you rune gate into another dragon. So that's where Morian Skies comes in handy. That being said, uh, if I need to strengthen, I just like, weaken this the Dromai matchup for this deck. But there are still quite a number of go-again enablers which I can use against Dromai. Just slightly less, maybe three less than the regular Vincent decks. But uh, as a trade-off, we get we get three more Shadow Knot attack actions to trigger Vincent's on hurts, and uh, get more three blocks. Yes. So Venom Ray, damage covering fire, widespread ring covering fire, which can potentially replace itself if you play a Shadow Knot attack action. Widespread destruction, something to end your triple gate turn on, or you can use it as covering fire and just get stuff out of your opponent's arsenal. Something nasty of the arsenal. Chains of effect is good against brutes. So turns out the best way to deal with a savage beast is to chain them up. You can use Pummel, la, so it's like the best way to deal with a savage beast is to chain them up and hit them with a stick. But in order to like, have Pummel work against KO, you need like say six Pummels, but uh, playing six Pummels is a problem. La. Shadow will also get more cards to banish. The reason I went down from 3 to 2 is that this is future card advantage. You banish a card out of your hand, which you cannot use, you cannot normally play, so you don't IP yourself, you draw more cards for the next turn. You use something like Pumpkin, banish the card. That's like cards you can use immediately. Widespread Annihilation, ah. Uh, you can make some, with the power of moderate tie, right? You can make some like interesting obscene shit happen with this. So uh Guardian of the Shadow Realm. It was moderate tight in the inventory. Uh it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. All the things which I am all the matchups have the more the moderate tight in uh, so I guess. Uh okay, Guardian of the Shadow Realm against Guardians. See, it's even written, written on the card itself. But yeah, they swing they swing for a lot, lah, so you need to block for a lot. Against Azalea, this is very good also. You banish this, you can bring it back. You banish, Arsenal, you banish the Amurable, it's not going to come back at all. And this costs like 2 resources to play. For a deck with only 14 resources, uh, yeah, this will be much better. I mean, both in can use their Soul Shield for like 2, for 6. So we shouldn't com so we shouldn't be complaining that hey this only blocks for six. So moderate tight, yes, moderate tight. Okay, so moderate tight. If moderate tight lets viscerai, if moderate tight lets viscerai double the amount of room chance it can play, moderate tight can help Vincent to break the laws of physics. You'll see why later like the, the upcoming matches. You can do aside from chaining. Okay, so one misconception you guys have, right, is you think moderate tight is only good for the deathly wills. Like, oh, you can even use it to chain the deathly wills together. Wrong. To that I say, you are not playing moderate tight enough. You can do like six shit with it. Let's say you banish the deathly delight. You won't get a deathly delight. And then you think that's it, right? Even though you have to go get an en enabler, that's it, right? You cannot do anything else. You only can swing the field, right? Because your Deathly Delight doesn't make rune chance wrong. Let's say you have a Funeral Moon in your Banish Zone, you have a blue or yellow in your hand. You pitch a blue, instead of create to the Grass of Yacht Knight, instead of creating one rune chance, you create two because of Moderate Type. Then you play a Funeral Moon from Banished. Instead of one, you get two. So now you got four rune chance, right? What can you do? You can Widespread Annihilation. So you can Deathly Delight into Widespread Annihilation. See? Or you can like, if you only got one like Funeral Moon in Banish, you can like Deathly Delight into another Rune Gate 2. Or you can like, with the earlier sequence, you can maybe even play a Double Gate turn backwards and end your turn with Rune Chance instead of without any Rune Chance. So there's a lot which Moderate Tide can do. Read the runes. So while waiting for a combo turns, you can use this to stack. You can even use it with Eloquence Token or Spell One Creepers to provide the 3 rune chance required to shoot off. Reduce the rune chant and sick below. So the D reacts, they block for a lot, but nowadays in the heavy eaters meta, don't count on having a 4 block D reacts, block everything. So D reacts need to have something else to do. Like. So this one provides card advantage, combine it with the chains of uh You can banish stuff you can banish rune gate cards and then you can like so you can skip the whole like drawing the card part and you can skip the whole like banishing the card part 
So it's actually pretty good lah, if you can get this to if you can get these two to like banish the cards you want. But only do this when you are at parity or ahead. When you're behind, right, you will just set yourself down one card to block. So only do this when you are sure your opponent makes one swing per turn. Or that is the last swing for the turn. Okay, now Requiem. It's that go the other go again enabler. It's half of a go again enabler. You need to pair it with the funeral moon or tear through the portal. But it still counts as a shadow not attack action, triggers on hurts. You can combo the eloquence token with read the runes and chains on my fat list. So this is why this is why the Requiem still has some use. Like. This is why Requiem over Morbrand's guys. And it also blocks for 3. So Rebel and Rune is like if you go 3 white and you can go and maybe if you can go 4 white, it gives you extra rune chance to like just like murder your opponent with. So Sonata Galaxia. This is a way to this is a way to play your Rune incantations for free. Previously you could find Looming Doom, but there is a problem with Looming Doom, I'll explain later. So Oblivion, with this deck. Reaching 6 room chance is fairly easy. So if you get Oblivion, just wait for 1 or 2 turns, or maybe even 0 turns, you can get Nasrev out. So, I'm sure you all know what, the, what these are for. So this this for KO, this one maybe for ninjas. This lets you cycle your hand faster. I should probably like, okay, wait, sorry, give me a, give me a few minutes. I mean a few seconds. Let's get the things we want into the deck for the default matchup. I don't want to end up with a... Oh. Wait, this is already... Oh, no it's not. Okay, now it is. So this lets you cycle into more cards. You don't... You see a card you don't like, right? You just like... You just like pitch it. And then you... Force your opponent, hey, you want this card? Or you want to like... I have one less card in your hand or you want to give me a rune chan. So most of the time they have one less card in your hand so they won't like be able to swing that hard at you. So this is a way at like cycling your hand and what else? Ebon for okay, the wizard one. And then Vexing Quill Hand, this is for Wizard. This is for Dromite. So you can hold your you can hold your flail to swing at Spectra Auras. You can hold your Scepter to swing to kill the Ash Wings. Then if they play burn them all, you have the AB from the Vexing Quill Hand. Then cards which I removed. Yes, Bounding Demigon still could still be a viable option. Just that Rift Skitter, I tried to like combo Rift Skitter and so far I like what I see. Lah. So for now these are out. I mean like if you're playing something which counts on like whether you won't get all your attacks, let's say putrid stirrings or envelop, you would rather run the Rift Skipper instead of this bounding demigon. But unfortunately this deck doesn't have it lah. I may want to find a way to squeeze in more envelop in darkness so I can more reliably get that third rune chant, but yeah, lah, I'll see how it goes for that. Shadow of Ursa, because just now I said the like future card advantage and current card advantage. Pumpkin gives current card advantage. So, a more reliable card advantage at that. Let's say if I play Shadow or I don't anything in my hand to banish, can't do shit. You can just like swing for two and just like consume all my rune chance, and that's about it. So that's why I'm down from three to two. Looming Doom, okay, yes, Looming Doom. People say it's good against uh, it's good against fatigue matchups where they only bring in one AB. But problem is, Looming Doom absolutely murders your tempo. You've got ten rune chance, right? If you swing your attack, now opponent needs to like, deal with 10 rune chants popping and the attack. So they need to pitch, they need to block. If you play Looming Doom, just outright like that. Say I'll deal the person like 10, 10 damage over time or something like that. Maybe like 15 or something if they cannot, if they don't want to pitch for it. What is going to happen, right, is your opponent is going to start their turn with a handful of cards. Next turn, go, what, do what? Crippling crush you. Now you die. You fucking drop your hand, you die. It's not gonna work. So yeah, that's why Looming Doom absolutely murders your tempo. There is a way to get Looming Doom to work with your tempo, but you need to play as a second. You need to play it with your second attack, so that Spellbound Creepers is active. Use it like Looming Doom, 
maybe like throw in a rebel and room blood then you like flash in your looming doom and because of the power of layering you will still get the rune chunks popping damage you still get your doom counters for the looming doom and you still get to play your second attack it sounds very good on paper right but no you get to like uh, wait wait before that wow you can even use a sonata galaxy to find your looming doom for free so you can do that right on second attack right that sounds very good on paper right no in practice you need to line up a go again enabler a shadow no attack action two room gates either a sonata galaxia or a looming doom and a blue to pitch to the looming doom and a rebel and room blood so that your looming doom will last for more than two turns and won't do like four damage only so you see like the problem like getting multiple cards to like line up for like this like wow this like god sequence like that sort of thing so if there are people who are saying like hey moderate tight is like super clunky you are unable to like you only can make it work out with definitely will and whatever if there's such a person out there saying like saying that and then at the same time also saying that hey uh we can get the looming doom to line up with the shadow no attacks and the rebel room blood and then the sonata galaxy or whatever to go and like do the damage and then like get a looming doom doom counters that's a bit disingenuous but i think okay like, honestly i don't think anybody said that like, it's like one person said one thing another person said one thing and me in my sleep deprived state i like, say i like, thought like hmm, somebody just said that but it's like the opinions of different people like, i'm just conflating the opinions of different people into one which is not fair like. that's that's stupid that's stupid do not do not do what i do not do what i'm doing yes so anyway okay before the angry ranting of maniacal laughter continues let's just go straight to the matches lah. we'll just return with a short debrief of how the deck worked out so far i am not going to do the spreadsheets for the foreseeable future lah. the one where i like, plan out what happens the whole like match transcript like whatever happened whatever happened like see what cards you can they play that sort of thing although it is good although i can like see what the i can work by looking at that i can see like how what the, what the play patterns of a of a bravo what are play patterns of a victor goldman or the Vire. although i can do that i would take more than like given my schedule now right i'll take more than a if i did that right this video will come out a month later and then by that time i'll be on to something new and then i might be forced or be, might be compelled to like just like scrap this whole thing and then move on to the new thing and then nothing will come out and then i'll be super frustrated so Yes, for my sanity, no spreadsheet for now. But I will be like maybe like I may be like coming up with something like for this like post match debrief la, involving the spreadsheet like that. La. Let's see how it goes. La. So anyway, yeah, off to the matches. Okay, so this is a Leviathan match. I might as well record it. La. I lost to this guy just now because uh was warming up and then I accidentally banished one too many cards my ass couldn't cash or whatever they are i wrote too many checks my ass cannot cash yes that's how the saying goes anyway we're gonna like flip the grass down here then we play the chains of mathematics in case he starts off with a blood rush battle we know you pay the life here add shadow puppetry to arsenal so the idea here is to get three death three wound gates into banish, two of which are deathly wills. Then we can do a triple gate turn. Right now it isn't looking very good for us. Should have used the No no no, I should as in like looking back, luckily I didn't use the pumpkin to banish. Otherwise I'll banish a room by incantation, which is not good. And okay. Here I'm gonna aggressively use the I'm gonna aggressively use this uh crown of providence to get the stuff I want. No, uh what I need to do here, right? Is I will use the Oh, he can't use swing big. There's no chance of a swing big for him. At most he will swing the claw and that's it. So I will do this. And that question becomes what do I want to no 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 sorry uh why don't i just take the three damage now and flip the ventum wraith oh but banish the sink below because of the fucking 
<laughs> because of fucking chains of Mephetis. But if this is a way, this is a way to like get stuff into Banish. So maybe I should aggressively do this. Yeah, it'll get me to like the thing I want faster, I hope. Oh, but I cannot do it here, I cannot do it here. Because I will, if I do it here, I cannot play the room like incantation. So the correct play here, banish the death lead like, remove, keep it in play because I'm an idiot. Then uh we do this, we do this, then we just like use the extra damage to shoot him for one. Is he gonna take it? He can throw away, he can pitch out the cards if he wants. Yeah, he pitch out the cards, uh, they'll slow him down somewhat. We okay, that's the first death he will. That this is a go again enabler, but oh, swing big. This is another go again enabler if I can block it. Uh, it's a bit inconvenient to block though. 3, 2, 2. So enough, uh, enough go again enablers to. But then I get got one Shadow Puppetry here. But on the other hand, it can help me to get to like a. It can give me an extra go again enabler to like, but then extra go again enabler to like do stuff to like extend my turn lah, the triple gate turn to a four gate turn or whatever. But then again, the quicker itself is a go again enabler, and if I do this, I don't take damage. So what I'm going to do here, right? I am going to use the Deathly Will. I'm going to banish the Deathly Will next turn. So probably these two can be used as blocking fodder. Then whether I'll use the Jack or Lantern or not, that is another story. La. So idea here, uh, we could... Okay, we can afford to, we can afford to, like, not. Nah, that's not IP ourselves. Let's banish this. This is better if I banish it off a pumpkin or, like, somewhere else, off a shadow of Ursa. So, let's do this. The question becomes, do I want to use the pumpkin here? So what if I banish a moderate type? If I banish a moderate type, well, it's my fault because I know who runs the pumpkins. Let's not pay the life for this. There's a widespread annihilation, we... Destruction, I mean, we cannot do anything about that. I can block with everything in this hand and then try to get the moderate type. If I use the if I use the pumpkin to like start a combo there, it wouldn't have worked because if I banish the widespread destruction and I won't be able to chain into the next deathly will. So do I want to banish one more deathly will here? That is the question. Beast within six. You see, because once Leviya, once Leviya has no cards in the graveyard, once I do attack, she cannot block, like, she cannot get, like, Leviya cannot get enough cards into her graveyard. She cannot, like, accelerate, I don't know how to explain that, it's like, she cannot get cards into the graveyard, yeah. Do we want Rainbow? I think no need la, no need la. Two death eagles for now will be enough. If he sends the arsenal packing, so be it. We have a reduced rune chant here. We need the spellbound creepers to survive. We need the shadow puppetry to survive. Even though, okay, even though the shadow, even though the shadow puppetry doesn't survive, it's okay because why? They don't. 
what she needs to survive lies in shadow mode action. I need to I need to review the tapes for this again. I'll see like how how useful was this? Uh, how useful was how useful was what? How useful was the chains on FF is in banishing cards, which like leads up to our game plan or they are winding up for a big turn yeah yeah it's the big turn there's a big turn in here oh it's the big turn crank it up nah, never i have no idea how to do it thank you please bear with me and what do we want to do here here. Do I want to hold up for another moderate type? Because technically, I can do a I can do a triple gate already because I have a funeral moon which I can banish. But what if I'm a greedy fuck? What if I want to hold out for another? Like I've rainbow, I have rainbow deathly wheels in my banish zone. And I need to make use of them. I need to draw the cards. I need to oh, oh, oh! They're swinging. Never mind. So be it. I will use the reduce rune chant here. Pick two. Yes, no cards in the graveyard. In case they follow up your blood rush battle. Okay, after this turn, after this turn, we need to do the triple gate already. No question, no doubt about that. Oh, I didn't banish uh I didn't banish a rainbow deathly will. Sorry. So it can be deathly will, deathly will, deathly delight. I'm gonna hold out for a moderate type. So we can go deathly will, deathly will, widespread annihilation. But yeah, let, let's see how that works out. Uh. Let's see if that ah that's a moderate type, okay. He fucking dies. <laughs> no, okay, uh, sorry, that was overreacting. I could get put in a situation where I am the one who fucking dies here. Is there a way where I get to play the rip skipper? Wait, actually there is, there is. Now there is a funeral moon in the graveyard. At the banish, I can go Rift Skitter into a Rune Gate too. Hmm. Okay, uh Let's take this tree. Let's take this tree. Just in case there is a sand packing, I will need to use something to block it. Let's take this as well. Okay, now the bullshit begins. I'm sure glad I recorded this. This can go very badly or very horrible. This can go very goodly or very badly. Uh, first of all, let's do the deathly will. Wait, 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 wait. Because what's going to happen here is I will use... I will have to use the... Okay, so what happens here, right, is I cannot use the spell one Creepers to cheat out the Modred type. I need to use it to cheat out the Shadow Puppetry. Because if I play any of... If I just attack now, and then I gotta use both moderate type and shadow puppetry after the after the first after the first deathly will what is going to happen is one of these will break the chain which means i only get two rune chance out of this will force me to use the funeral moon i have a quicken already so what i'll do first is moderate type 
Tu, tu, tu. <laughs> okay, so first moderate type, then. So there is a problem here. The problem here is that if I if I use if I swing the deathly will now, he can just block. He can just AD for everything theoretically, and then use the Karen house to block out fully block out. There is a chance where the deathly will will fail to connect. Everything will fail to connect, and the whole sequence falls apart. So. What I gotta do is Jack O Lantern, pay the life. This will confirm things. This will confirm things. There's a Venom Rift. Okay, so now we begin. Anyway, the Creepers only works for one. Nah. So the last. So the last Rune Gate. Before the, the last Rune Gate 3, before the Rune Gate 2, will be the Rift Skater. After that funeral moon will create two rune chants and then we can rune get two from there. So there's an additional four damage. That's like a bounding demigod, but I didn't need to staple on the I didn't need to staple on the what you call it? I didn't need to staple on the go again enabler. But I need to staple on the moderate tide and the funeral moon la, so <laughs> that's another that's another thing to Oh wait, actually, if I get like extra action points, I could even pitch the thing to the widespread destruction. I could even pitch widespread destruction to the. I could even pitch the widespread destruction to the grass of the art knight to get two additional rune chants. So now the question becomes: Did I pack enough? Did I pack enough like rune chants? I mean, did I pack enough go again enablers? I get a feeling no, so I cannot do widespread destruction. And uh, what? Oh, he plays Vile Inquisition. I don't think Vile Inquisition works on Talisha. You need to banish. You can only banish your opponent's cards with it. You cannot banish your own cards with it. Okay, so this is done already. What will happen now is I will. Okay, I want this out of my hand. So I'll pitch this. If I need the extra resource for Grass on the Out Knight. I can always use the tunic resource. This is saving a tunic resource because we're gonna end the turn with zero rune chance and we need uh we'll need one extra resource for the reduce to rune chance if that happens. So we pitch this. Then we pass. Then we can cast this as an instant. We've paid a life already, we don't need to pay life, I think. Then we close the chain. Then these are going to be available to us. So that's one gate, one gate, two gate, three gate, four. Boom gate, come and we drop with the bomb. Boom. <laughs> uh, no. We might need that. Now, we will close the chain. This will give us three rune chants. Then, what do we do here? 
Oh, we got two action points. We got two action points. So we can't do widespread destruction. That is for certain. Oh, we can do widespread destruction. It's just where that whether if we want to whether we want to do like uh because if we do the risk skitter now then we can do deathly delight but both of these do not refund the rune chance so i think here what i need to do is i need to do the widespread destruction So it's either this one or this one la. If I do this, I can do two I can do two go against. I can clear like absolutely clear the vanish zone. Maybe let's do that like He can't do any ship is then next turn we just like smash his arsenal. So we risk it turn now. I hope I got this correct. I risk it turn now. I get one extra action point. Now he can't turn into the via consume. I mean he can uh, he can he can use his Karenas to block. <laughs> but although I don't think you should be using Karenas to block this, you should be using it to block what comes next. But okay, he doesn't have a choice, but either way he's not gonna turn into the Vire consume this turn. The Vire redeem, I don't think so, lah, so he pass. Then Oh, we have to close the chain for that, but, but I don't think we close the chain here. We, oh, we need to close the chain. Either way, la. Either way. No, no, we close the chain here because he didn't block with this. And if we block with this, it will break, la. But okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, close the chain here. And then I do this. It's like a no rune chance, right? Guess what? Now I do. Now I have two. <laughs> I wonder if I should edit out all the like evil laughter. This is this is fucking this is fucking insane. How many room gates were these? How many room gates did I go again? Shit, I need to go and see the fucking... <laughs> I need to go and see this fucking video again. I don't even know if I should do the fucking spreadsheet for this. This is, this is too much. <laughs> it's too fucking much. Now why couldn't this happen? Now why couldn't this happen when I was like fighting Okay, rematch time. He got so carried away by that. He wants a rematch. But okay, I cannot I cannot guarantee that the results which you see just now will happen. Anyway, this is the this is the loadout. I don't think I recorded that for the first like match. He <laughs> was like, the fuck happened? I was gonna win and then I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god, this, this this is this is too much. This is too much. But I say again, I say again, uh, this may not happen. This does not happen all the time. There is a very equal possibility that I'll just like kick the can here, I just like fucking die here. Anyway, I was saying just I was, as I was saying just before I cut this video on the before I cut the the video for the first round. Why couldn't this have happened when I was like fighting men like fighting men sent on the stream?
I mean, I didn't bring in the Rift Skippers, but at least I can do a triple gate la, with the moderate type. Okay, la, maybe I was too, like, being too stupid with the blocks, la, that's why it didn't happen. Anyway, okay, we need to, we need to be, we need to be more deliberate here. Oh, 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 oh. now, now we, now we are pot racing, now we pot racing, ah. Uh, eh. No, I don't. Ah, it's just the armor first, lah. I will sink. I'll sink this. Uh Okay, there is a player. I don't have to play this, but I might want to in case he wants to like come out of a blood rush battle. But alternatively, I can still block with that lah. Okay, uh he played the Howl from beyond to get this. Okay. He played the Howl from beyond. He played Howl from beyond. Okay, I was going to say he played from Banish, but he did. He played from hand to get into the graveyard. So that gives him additional, like, he removes his IP penalty, gets to draw more cards. And then he has three cards to do for that thing later. So do this. Then we pitch this. Then we play this. Then the question becomes, do we pay... No, we don't pay the life, we don't pay the life. We are not going to IP ourselves, this is going to the arsenal. If we play this now, it also goes to the arsenal. Mm-hmm. One of these need to be flipped. I would like to keep both of these. So I'll need block with the Crown of Providence. I mean I'll flip one of them lah. Not gonna flip the funeral moon because we are gonna play it or not. Maybe not la, we can just give ourselves options. But I would like to play the funeral rune here, I would like to get extra rune chan. But what good will the extra rune chan do when we are stacking rune chans? And if you think I want to keep it for like double death will, will, no, I, I need I need this out of my arsenal so I can do the good stuff. So I think well, it's gonna get, wherever I play it's gonna get banished here anyway, la so <sighs> Perhaps I should have done this. Never mind, let's do it. Oh, Requiem for the Dead. Uh, now, this is a. Nah, we don't. We don't need it at the moment. Nah, we don't need it at the moment. Rift Skitter. I think I can make things. I can make it more interesting things work with the Rift Skitter. So I will just do this, then I will use the thing, the Venom Rave to do this. Then we pass, then we arsenal this. Uh huh. We need more deathly. We need more deathly wills. We require additional pylons. Oh six shit! Now we are in trouble. Something's gone wrong at the burst of bubble. At all, we're in trouble. Something gone wrong at the first bubble. Hey, hey. There's an agility and a might token. Perhaps the strategy here isn't to. Perhaps the strategy here isn't to like. <clears throat> What if there's a swing big?
if there's a swing big eye, if there's a swing big eye, I don't really need like any of these, so I can just uh. Yeah, let's just mitigate the damage first lah. We made a mistake. We made a mistake with the... We made a mistake with this, uh, what you call it? With the first block. We should have blocked that. We should have blocked the last attack. We should have called that he had a swing bait. Block that and get a free go again. I think we can hold on for another turn and then we need to consider... We need to consider like working with whatever we have here. This is too this is too like uh greedy already. This is too greedy on my part. If we lose this, this is zombie. There's another deathly will. So we've got two deathly wills. Uh we don't have the moderate type though, we have a jack o' lantern. And I was saying like we use in the description from in one of the previous videos, we are supposed to use cards like Jack O' Lantern and Funeral Moon and like the other one to do stuff. So I cannot just be like relying to find the moderate type. This deck can still do a triple gate without the moderate type. I think we need to I think we need to fire off here lah. We need to fire off here. You see here, it tosses his agile wind up already. If there's a chance to get him more damage, it has to be now. Oh, but then the problem is like 3. Uh huh. So the problem here now is that. I cannot do I cannot do the final I cannot like do anything to risk it though. I just gotta be a greedy fuck here, I just gotta be a greedy fuck here. I'm just gonna pass. Okay, that's a funeral moon. But that's about it. Okay, funeral moon actually gives a gives a thing. A go again. We have to take the tree here. I mean, we didn't have to, though. but okay, anyway, how do we make this work out? We can do like two. Yeah, realistically, we can we can clear the thing. So first of all, what I need to do here is we don't have a quicken token. We don't have a quicken token. That is that we do first. The first step we will.
Oh, he got no AP already. I should just like buy it off. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, we might go down to one. The one advantage that definitely will. Let's let's be fucking greedy. And then here we do this. If we banish a funeral moon here, it could be interesting. Though. Oh, okay, never mind. I think there's a chance we die here. <laughs> ah, okay, you can't you can't you can't get everything the every day. So what I need to do here is I need to close the combat chain. Then I play the Requiem. So this is no this is no fault of no fault of that. It's like this one is this is this bullshit is on me. Uh this bullshit is on me. So I close the thing and then I pass and then that's the moderate type which I waited. Can we do the same thing against Victor Goldman? Let's see. And as I always say, if Oh Okay, okay. We are apparently we are not playing sync pillows against Victor. Okay, uh, I'll see how this goes. So as I always say, like if I say if I use the name like Victor Gold Striker enough times, maybe Sam Hyde will dress up as Victor Gold Striker for fish or as Victor Gold Main for Fish Tank Season 3. <laughs> you never know. Uh here what I want to do. He has AV, so no point, but I can do it if I want to filter my hand. Lah. So what I'll do here, right, instead is I will do this. Ah, gets me closer to my moderate type, I guess. Grass of the Art Knight, we pitch both. All cards cleared from our hand. We don't let him filter. Next turn, we will banish the Funeral Moon, I guess, because... We can clear we can clear this in a pinch. We cannot clear these in a pinch. So a lot of them goes to Arsenal. So I can use these two to I can use these two to block. I can use one of them to block. If it swings if it swings with the Miller's grindstone, I use this and an armor to block but alternatively there is a chance that there is a very good chance that this thing destroying the top card of the deck does not destroy the does not destroy the moderate type. So this will get me closer to the stuff I want. It does not destroy moderate type, does not destroy shadow puppetry, stuff like that. Lah. I could flip. I could flip. No, but anyone anyway, using the thing to pay for the Now we do this for now, we do this for now. That's a Jack O' Lantern. It will destroy a Jack O' Lantern, which is no biggie, but the problem no not a problem, but the but the good thing about not destroying the Jack O' Lantern is that will get me to the card I want faster.
Hmm? That's the goal. And get another funeral moon into the banished or I mean, you get the Requiem into the Banished, or we get the Deathly Will into the Banished. Most likely, it's going to be the Deathly Will, and we use the Requiem to pay for the... No, we use the Requiem to block. Although, triggering the Crush effect here is a problem because you're not attacking now, I would like to... Wait, wait, no, 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 uh, undo, sorry. Where's the sorry? As, as, as I was saying, as I was saying, triggering the crush effect has no problem here. So even though I can block with this to save myself three damage, I can save myself the tunic resource by just eating the crush damage. Huh? Whether that's correct or not, I don't know, but it just got us down to 32, so mm, that's, a, that's a problem. So, what do you want to do here? Or I could even be greedy, use this as the use this as the go again enabler. Yeah, use the spring tunic to But uh, choices, choices. Like what happens if the moderate type does not come within the three turns? Or if I can use this, that if I use this, that can use this as the go again enabler instead of the requiem. Or I could draw a blue which will help with this. You know what, never mind. I will just do this and I will regret my decision later. There's another Requiem. <laughs> the funeral room together with the Requiem of the Dead. Stick them in your banished zone to save space in your hand. It gives deathly will go again. And after that, a room gate tree. <laughs> Spinal crush. You're not gonna dominate that. <sighs> I mean, we are wasting the chains of Mephetis clash thing, but it's okay, lah. It's okay. We're gonna take a, a whole chunk of blood that damage here, so yeah. So we got the Requiem, we've got both in the banished. So we can draw four cards this turn. There's a moderate type. Do we have a Shadow Puppetry? We have a Sonata Galaxia though, we can just Oh now we don't have the wait, we have a go again enabler. I don't know how this, how this works, though. As in, I can do a I can do a triple gate combo now, but do I want to? That is the question. Okay, uh, wait, so thinking, please bear with me. Uh, I can block with something here. I can block with something here. I can block with the Looming Doom. Do I want to block with the Looming Doom? 
So with a shadow puppet, with a, this one, these two can count as a... These two can count as a... What you call it? These two can count as a... Go again enabler. So basically, I've got everything I need here to combo off. But is the combo... Is the combo big enough? Do I fire off here? That is the question. And the answer, I think it's probably... No, no, not at all. Because I think here, right, it might be better to get to a quadruple... quadruple gate. Because I can only do this once. The most I can do here is a triple gate. Because I don't have a shadow not the action. I don't have the shadow puppetry. I don't have a tear through the portal. So maybe what I'm gonna do here, right, is Sonata Galaxia. You gotta do this for four. We get our last copy of Room Blood Incantation and we hope we draw a shadow puppetry here. And we also hope that we we don't get the command and conquer here. Yeah, we get command and conquer here is gonna be very fucking inconvenient. But if we don't get a command and conquer here, right? Oh, <laughs> we can surely fire off Macho Grande. Yeah, the only thing which would have fucked with the plan there was the command and conquer. Oi! Oh, okay, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I can banish a funeral moon. Banish the funeral moon, okay. So how do I do this? Let's say I want to use my I want to use my uh I wanna use my rebel in room blood. To use the rebel in room blood and make the most out of it, I need to find uh I need to find a rune gate, which is not deathly will. I can use the revel and rune blood now because I have a rune blood incantation to give me one more rune chant at the start of my turn. So for that reason, I want my thing to hit. I want my, I want my what you what you call it what you call it the. I want my shadow puppetry to hit. Oh, but then again, no, no, no. It, it does not work the way I think it does because I have to start with the Shadow Puppetry. I can start with the Moderate Type. Wait, I can start with the Moderate Type. I can start with the Moderate Type. It's just that if I do two of these things, I will. If I do two of these things after the first attack, it will close the chain and I only get two rune chance out of it. I'll force me to use one of the Funeral Moons. Okay, so we start with Moderate Type first, as we sometimes do. Can he block everything here? There are 50, there are 17 rune chants here. Even if he pitched his whole hand, he can only block 15. And if he does that, the deathly will will still hit. There isn't like a there isn't another color after blue where you can pitch for four. 
Okay, okay, pitch, pitch. If I got this correct, right? If I got this correct, I should be able to do three more attacks. And he shouldn't be able to. And he shouldn't have the cards to deal with any of those attacks. These things, right? These things. It, oh wait. No, 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 it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Even if he draws cards of the clash, right? It's not gonna prevent the damage from the first from the first deathly will, which is the most important one. Because we need this to deal damage. We need this like first first like thing in the sequence to deal damage in order to like have the whole like other bullshit work its work itself out. See, so it took damage already. No, I've got nothing to say to that. I've got nothing, no reaction to that. Do you have a reaction to this? Now we pay the life. Now we close the chain. They should give us three wound chance because of the moderate type. We have the shadow puppetry now, and I don't think we can draw a dash through the portal. So I'll just use the deathly will here. Let's see if it banishes a... Uh, let's see if it banishes a uh, triple gate. Rapping all the damn with Shadow Puppetry. I mean, okay, like, it'll give me an additional flail swing and then I can use this for later. So I play the first Requiem first. First Requiem first, haha. <laughs> So, I'm supposed to, I think I set this thing first, then I close the combat chain. Oh wait, I only got two of the things to shoot at him. You know what? You know what? Let's just let's just swing again. Let's just swing again. And I think I think I just like figure out what to do with this. He doesn't want to block with these two. Why? So. This 2 rune chance, 4 rune chance, 5 rune chance. So 4 plus 5, 9. You know what? You know what?
Just eat all the rune chance and die, lah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you pitch two, like, you pitch two, like, you pitch two blues, right? Then like, what are you gonna do? You gonna pitch your armor? <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid, this is stupid, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> okay, I'm back, so... Uh, how did the matches go? We won the match against Leviah. We lost the second match against Leviah because I was being like greedy, trying to go for the triple gate when in actuality I could just like put the pressure on them with the double gates. All the things to do a double gate was there, but I was too like tunnel vision on the triple gate. So that's why I lost that match. So against Victor, it was quite interesting how we could just one hit KO him now from 40 life to zero. So I'm pretty satisfied with this deck. I think there can be improvement made. There can be some improvements made based on like the calculations in here i'll explain later like but anyway this is let's say for these calculations right i will do it based on like the bravo loadout for the bravo loadout right we remove these cards and this one because you don't want to accidentally banish i mean this can help us to combo off faster but we don't want to accidentally banish like a sink below or something like that lah. And we really like we need the we need the D reacts more than we need like the chains of Mephetis. So one, two, three, four, five. We bought in five D reacts. So we'll be using this for the calculation. So what was I doing, right? Let's say we're we'll trying to find out like what happens on a triple gate and what happens on a quadruple gate. So for triple gate is pretty clear cut. So we got this, this. Let's remove all of these first. So, people get. So, your hand. No, this one. Uh, let's remove this first. Okay. Let's say this is a triple gate turn. So, we shadow puppetry. We got these, then. Uh, these two, we need to banish something lah, so these two we can use it for blocking. So let's say it's a 3, this is a 4, the D react. Then we use we save our armor to just before the combo turn. So that gives us 3 plus 4, 7 plus 2, 9, at least 11 block. If you use the crown of providence to get our combo faster, that will be 3 plus 4, 7, 7 plus 2, 9 block. That should be enough against a Crypting Crush or Spinal Crush so that we can get to... We don't get the go again penalty, we get to like combo off. So anyway, how will the Triple Gate turn go? So we Shadow Puppetry. And we definitely will. So let's say... 3 turns right, so this should be... Rune chance. If we don't have a, if we didn't like create rune chance naturally from the read the runes or whatever thing like that, so this is what we have. Then after that, we spring Kilonic spell one creepers. Then we play the moderate type plus one AP. So this is minus. We got one A. We start with one AP first. So we start with 1 AP, then we minus 1 AP plus 1 AP. So it's a net positive, but we definitely, if it definitely will, like this. I hope that makes sense, sorry. Uh, then I get the 1 AP from this. So we got 2 action points now, 1, 1. It's a 2 action points. Then afterwards, we close the chain. Then I get 3 room chance. Then we definitely will. Then we close the chain. Then we definitely will again. How much does this add up to? This will add up to 
25. That's a 25 damage turn. On average, la, because we don't know which colors we'll draw, la, so I'll just take the average, like blue, yellow, and red, like one of each. La. So on average, we'll do 20, about like 25 damage with a triple gate turn. That is if we go straight off on turn 3. If we go on turn 4 or later, based on whether we need to do covering fire, whether we got play reduce the rune chant, the number could be higher or number could be lower. So 25 is pretty respectable. La. Then hopefully, when you're done with this on turn 3, you still have enough hit points to build up to another triple gate turn. So like the probabilities of drawing all of these, right, is I'll just calculate them like I'll if I can I'll like figure out how to do it, lah. Maybe like toss the everything into like a hyper geometric calculator, then see what the odds of drawing this like sequence of cards. Uh like this sequence of cards and then like stuff like that. Lah. So anyway, the funeral moon part is like here. I mean the quadruple gate, let's go on to the quadruple gate. So if a, if a triple gate right can do a respectable amount of damage, right? A quadruple gate can almost kill the opponent. If they block with their whole hand, if their armor right, it'll still do a significant amount of damage. So let's say the this is like the whole like funeral. I mean this is a whole like quadruple gate turn, yes. So I've already like done everything here, so I don't take too long. So we do the Shadow Puppetry, Deathly Will, Spring Tunic, Spellbound Creepers, Wildred Tide, Close Chain, Deathly Will, Close Chain, Deathly Will. Then we've got extra Requiem of Damn, Funeral Moon, Banish Play both. Then you get your extra action point, close the chain, three rune chance. Then you wait, no, uh this should be four rune chance, yes. Uh because of the thing, the Funeral Moon, so this should be 10. So it should be doing 37 damage. So 37 minus 12. Minus, let's say, the Guardian blocks with all their armor. They got 2, they got 2, they got 2, they got 2. Okay, like that's 17 that's 17 damage but that's assuming the guy blocks with his head armor his chest armor his arms armor and then like two from everything la, as well as his whole hand so that's like 17 damage at least you might need to do like some oh wait, wait wait but if he does that if he does that if let's say bravo does that right he will eat all the it won't be 17 because it won't be 17 because like let's say uh he will take the damage from he will take arcane damage I guess or something like that uh, because or he will like be very shitty at hitting because he's right he's running Titan's fist or something like that. I mean yes a good chunk of the damage can be blocked off but this should be like if they don't block if they if you like did like pressure them before this could be enough to like outright kill them and it's not a given that they will have the it's not a given that they will have like the blue cards in their hand so maybe sometimes blocking could be in or pitching could be inconvenient for them so still a good chunk of damage will go through and you have also checked also like the earliest you can get off a quadruple gate turn would be on turn 5 because you will need to see for all of these right you'll need to see 12 cards you know uh what am i talking about wait Okay, yeah, I, I don't know what I was talking about. So...
if I want to do this on turn 3, let's say I draw this arsenal, this so I can draw like 4 more cards. So let's say this is turn 0. Then I arsenal this. No, that, that, this. I oh, see you need to like banish the things at the correct times also. Because if you draw all this in the same hand, you either need to block with them or like cycle with them. So actually to like carry out the combo on turn 3 is quite hard. I don't think you can do it on turn 3 unless you draw very well so that hand doesn't get jammed up with all of this. You can use like a maybe a shadow of Ursa, like banish something, a check or lantern, banish something. Like one of these like that. But yeah, uh turn three quadruple gate on turn three is quite unlike quite unlikely. Yeah. But triple gate on turn three is is quite easy, I think. Not easy but manageable or manageable. You can consistently triple gate on turn three. But quadruple gate uh, that requires like more research uh, research. Yes. I think I can call it research. Like how what what do I do to like, do I put in another dimensional gateway to make banishing cards easier? Do I put in another envelope to make the third room charm easier? Mm, who knows? There's there's much to learn, much to like much to consider. So I think this is gonna be it for this video. Otherwise it'll go on for too long. So uh anyway, like, share, subscribe, it helps a lot. You guys are the best. Bye bye. Stick them in your banished zone to save space in your head. It gives that we will go again. And after that, the room gate tree.